Hello, welcome to the Exhausted Programmer. My name is Alexander, and today we are talking about the Windows subsystem for Linux. In my videos, we always look at things from a Linux point of view. I use Ubuntu on Windows for all of the videos. Sometimes I SSH to other machines. Today, we're going to look at how we can get the Windows subsystem for Linux running on a Windows machine, what it can do, and maybe a few alternatives that we can use instead of installing new software, in case for some reason you can't do that. The first thing I want to point out is that Windows actually does have its own shell. In fact, it has two, and we'll take a look at both of them very briefly. This one is the standard command prompt, cmd.exe or just cmd. There's a lot of names people use for it depending on context or whatever. I myself have some familiarity with this because when I first got into computers a long time ago, uh, it was on a machine that, that had DOS as its main operating system, Microsoft DOS. So I still remember from my childhood uh, certain commands like the DRR to list directories, how to give flags, slash W uh, in order to find stuff. If you do have to find yourself using a command prompt, don't worry. You can always get uh, help just by running the help and the uh, command you want to run, or you can give it this question mark flag, that is D-I-R slash question mark. It is a little weird to get used to the slashes, even though I started with this, I still have to sort of refresh myself a little bit on how to use this stuff. If this is what you have, don't worry. Again, if you need to get to Linux, you can always SSH to a, another machine that is running Linux. This is actually how I first started working in my programming skills in college is that I bought a Raspberry Pi Zero. It did not have Wi-Fi, but you can do networking over the same wire you're using to power it. That is one wire that connects your Raspberry Pi to your computer. I was using a laptop. And from that, I could SSH into the Raspberry Pi and do everything I needed to do in Linux because it is a full Linux distro. It is worth pointing out that uh, the command line or the command prompt isn't the only option. There is also the PowerShell. Let's uh, clear this as well. Similarly, you can run uh, DIR, and, but it is worth pointing out that the uh, flags don't work the same. So the slash W slash question mark doesn't work. Instead, they want you to use flags more like Linux. That's not a good example because um, we'll get to that in a second. So if you want that help, instead of slash question mark, you can do dash question mark and get some information, including the actual name of the program you're running, which is not DRR, it's get child item. In fact, there's a lot of aliases, uh, and then the flags that you can give it are the ones listed here. You can also do the help DIR. If you wanna see what other things are aliased, if you're not familiar with the PowerShell, if you're more familiar with Linux commands or the old command prompt commands, get alias just shows all the aliases. And again, we can SSH into a Linux machine the same one as last time. And here we are on a Linux distro with a blue background, if that's your thing. But if you don't want to buy any other hardware to SSH into, and if you have to run Windows and you don't want to dual boot, Windows subsystem for Linux is a great option. In fact, it's the one I default to the most. I still run Linux machines elsewhere that I SSH to all the time, but anytime I just want to write a quick little script just to try something out, or make the things for these videos, I usually start with the Windows subsystem for Linux. You can run it in the PowerShell as WSL. I think if I run this, oh, it just boots right into my Ubuntu system, uh, my Ubuntu 20.04.6, which really needs to be updated, and we'll do that in this video. In my Git videos, there's a clear difference between running Git on this system and running Git on a newer installation. Git's version on this system is very behind what is the current modern version, which I think is like 2.4 something, like 48, somewhere up there. And there have been some significant changes in Git in that time. Remember this distro came out April, 2020. With that in mind, we have two options to move forward. We can either update this as if it is a Linux distro, because it is a Linux distro, and we can follow standard protocols for updating an Ubuntu system, which is to make sure your system is completely up to date using sudo app update, sudo apt upgrade, and we'll run one more command uh, just to be fully sure that we're as up-to-date as possible. So I tend to run it like this. And when you do, you get a list of all the stuff that needs to be updated, and you might get some other information that you need, such as if you need to run um, the auto remove or anything like that, but we don't need to install anything. We don't need to delete anything. Something else that is suggested though, is instead of upgrade, you can run full upgrade. And this just, not only does it upgrade any packages, but if there's some packages that need to be deleted, and I don't quite understand the difference between needs to be deleted and can be deleted, but if it needs to be deleted, this will do it and not the plain upgrade command. 
Once your system is completely upgraded though, the next thing it suggests you do is to restart your machine. Uh, in this case, just the Linux distro, not the whole Windows machine. We can close out the terminal, but sometimes it's still running in the background. Well, right now it's not running in the background, it's running in PowerShell. So let's get out of it here, clear the screen. And how do we know when it is done running? Well, we can use that WSL command we saw before to show us everything that we have on this machine. If we use the list command, and I'm also gonna get the verbose command, uh, we see that the version has stopped and it is on the kernel version two. Uh, we could also run this just with these flags with L and V, um, same thing. There's no difference between those. If it wasn't stopped though, we could run the terminate flag on our Ubuntu 20.04 and it will stop it if it wasn't already stopped. At this point, we could also delete the Ubuntu version there, but instead this video is focusing on updating it. So let's go ahead and get into Ubuntu and let's do the last command we need to do in order to get the release. Once doing this, it will run through a process. This process can take a little bit of time. So I'm gonna cut the video and come back every time there's a prompt. All right, the first prompt we see is that uh, we're going to remove a package that's no longer supported, and we do want to know what package that is. Uh, some packages are going to be removed, some are going to be updated, and some are going to be installed. Uh, we can run this details with D, and all I'm concerned about is this removed, which is going to remove some Python 3 file. I don't really care about that. So I'm going to hit Q to quit, and then I do want to continue, so I'll give it a Y. And then I'll come back when there's something new. Here we see a pretty self-explanatory prompt, which is just saying that there's libraries that are continuously running that in order to update will need to be restarted. Instead of asking me each time, I can just do yes one time and it will remember that. So hopefully it will be less prompts overall. So I'm gonna go ahead and say yes. Here we see a prompt just asking about removing packages, which we do want to remove. And it's saying it is done and we need to restart. So we hit enter. And again, it says to make sure you're not running it anywhere else. So I'm gonna check real quick. It is stopped everywhere. And there we go. And we hit X to get out of it, which gets us right back into it. I'm gonna go ahead and close out completely. This is the newer version, 22.04. And we see that we still have our stuff here. Uh, again, I made a backup something that is suggested anytime you install or update an operating system. Sometimes people might think that updating will always work. It does not always work. The thing is, is I usually don't update my operating systems like this. I usually just delete everything and restart fresh. I find that updating stuff over time tends to create a lot of baggage. I know there was a lot of prompting about deleting packages and updating packages, but I just have too much familiarity with Windows and how much it just leaves behind even when it says it's uninstalling stuff. So let me show you a few more ways that you can get this done. First, we have to get out of it. We'll go ahead and terminate it. And if we wanted to, we could delete it using the unregister command, um, which is just unregister. And then you give it the version you want to uninstall. And we'll go ahead and do that. And then if we list our stuff again, I guess it's just saying there is no installed, so there's nothing to list. So how do we get a newer version? Well, we could use the Microsoft Store. If you're very new to this command line stuff, you might find it very comforting to know that if you just go in here and search up WSL, uh, you will see a lot of options. You can get the standard Ubuntu, but you can also specify if you want the 2204, um, and I'm pretty sure the 2404 is listed separately right here. Uh, you can get Debian, you can get Arch, there's other options. But if you are familiar with the command line, I would suggest doing it this way, mostly because you can actually see it all on the screen at the same time. If we do a list online, these are all the options that we can install straight from this PowerShell command line. We're gonna go with the newest version of Ubuntu 2404. The update only gets us to the newest version of the LTS because I was on the LTS. There's a lot of options with the do release upgrade that you can research, but it's if you're on the LTS version, it's trying to try to get you the next one. And as you see, the non LTS versions of Ubuntu are not listed here. If you're not familiar with the way Ubuntu does its releases, it's two a year, every year, one in April, one in October. That's what the 0.04 means in this case is that it's the April release of the year 2020. 
every two years is a long-term release. And then that October, the next April, and the next October are all short-term releases, which can be fun to play around with, but they are not supported for longer than, I think, nine months. If you want something that you can leave installed for, let's say, four years like I did, it's best to go with an LTS. So let's go ahead and install a newer version of Ubuntu. Because if we're going to do all this, why not just get on the latest version? And this is as simple as it needs to be. You can give it the dash dash distribution instead of the dash D. And you can specify any of these other versions of Linux. If you want, you can have multiple versions going. That's all possible. This also takes some time. It will ask me for a Unix name, username, and a password that I can set up for this Ubuntu version. Of course, it's gonna be unique for you, and, but it's pretty straightforward. In fact, there was no reason for me to even cut there. It was just to ask me that as soon as I hit stop and as soon as I typed it in, it was says it was successful. Uh, it gives you some information here about running um, sudo or root. Try not to run as a root user. If you can avoid it, sudo is fine. It requires you to put a little bit of extra thought into what you're running, which means you're probably less likely to do something stupid. Although you can still do something stupid. That's why we make backups. If we LS here, we see that there is actually nothing available, but this blue background does not look good. It's also worth pointing out that all the commands in this video will be provided in the description below. So look there so you don't have to squint your eyes and pause the video constantly. Something I should have mentioned at the beginning of the video, but I forgot to do. So let me get Ubuntu running, but the NeoFetch isn't running. In fact, NeoFetch isn't even installed. So before we get going, it's the next thing you want to do is just to do the update and upgrade again, because even though this is a fresh install or because this is a fresh install, there's a lot of things that haven't been pulled in. It's done updating. I always run it a second time because sometimes there's messages before the upgrade part that I miss because it's just scrolling too fast, just to make sure there's nothing that might need to be done. We can grab our backup. My backup is again on my Windows machine. Desktop backup, and then I can grab. It helps if you remember what year you're living in. Uh, I use a common name convention, so it is this. I did delete all the other older backups just to avoid confusion for myself while making this video because YouTube blindness and other things are real. If I copy that to here, and then I can just extract it. And now I have everything I want. I have my Vim settings and everything. It might not look right, but that's because we just need to restart Ubuntu. Well, now we have my name as I want it. The colors are as I want them. NeoFetch isn't available because I haven't installed it yet. So I can just do that real quick. If I run NeoFetch now, it'll run. Give me the Ubuntu logo, but I can change that in a config file and then into NeoFetch. And then there's the config.conf. And then I think, uh, let's not do it that way. Let's do this and we'll change the ASCII distro. There's a lot of options here. Also, the Vim is not looking right, but I fixed that in a, another version before, so I'm pretty sure I can fix that here as well. Anyway, if I run NeoFetch, I have my Windows logo as expected and things are looking pretty good. One last thing to point out is that we can go back to our PowerShell look at our versions and for some reason, oh, I don't need to be in Linux when I do this. Uh, we have our 2404 right here. I might see about trying to install another version of Linux just to demonstrate how this looks when you have more than one version. So give me a second on that. Like I said, you can have more than one version of Linux installed on your Windows system using the Windows subsystem. So I still have my Ubuntu version here, which is the one I will keep. I might not keep these other two, but you can have OpenSUSE is an option and even Arch Linux is an option you can have installed. They are separate from each other and I really don't care to demonstrate all that. It is worth pointing though, is that I mentioned that you can run this WSL list online thing here, but if you look, there is no Arch listed here. That's because it is actually found in the Microsoft Store. So for some reason, all the options aren't listed in the PowerShell command. But if we look up WSL, uh, we will see more, although it's longer to scroll through, but you do have more options than what's just over here. So if you are 
curious, if you know what you're doing, you might want to try some of these other ones. If you are in any way a bit nervous about trying different versions of, of Linux, Ubuntu is always a good one to start with. And once you're finally comfortable with whichever version you're using, uh, obviously any of them will work when you know what you're doing. So let's just show real quick. If we do the list and V, we see that we have Ubuntu. This is the default version, Arch, and then Open SUSE. I hope that's how you pronounce that. They're all stopped right now because I closed out of them, but they were all running at the same time, so there wasn't any conflict. I'm never really too sure how long these videos will be. Uh, it's usually based somewhere on how long it takes to record, but in this case, downloading and updating packages took a lot longer, which is why I had to cut several times. The point though that I hope that I did get across, even if this video is longer than I intend, is that all this stuff is pretty easy to use. Installing an operating system in an operating system might sound complicated, but we see that there's GUIs with the Microsoft Store windows, there's options that you can do, you can have multiple running, and all the commands are pretty simple to use. There's also ways of finding help even in the command and the PowerShell, which I wanted to show because you cannot use the man pages, or at least I don't think you can use the man pages. Remember the dash question mark in the PowerShell because sometimes the help and command doesn't work. You can try it with help in WSL and you'll see that there's a problem, or at least there was on my machine. Maybe they fixed that in Windows 11. My own personal opinion on all the Linux versions is it's pretty simple. Whatever gets me to bash the easiest and is the easiest to use, it's the one I'll use. And I tend to stick with Ubuntu just because I know it has a very robust package manager system thanks to Debian. It is also pretty stable thanks to Debian and it has a lot of online support thanks to its own popularity. If you have any questions about installing operating systems in operating systems, please feel free to leave a comment below or questions about any other topics covered on this channel. If you like what you saw, please like and subscribe and thank you for watching.